Hello everybody. Today we are stuck at home so we are going to do a little bit longer and it could be beginners to advance and you're gonna take it as far as you want to but what we're gonna do is we are going to paint the succulent so it's going to be this little guy and I already painted on Zoom conference with um, a friend slash I guess we could call her a student now um, and we painted a little bit different so you can see how this is much lighter and this is a little bit darker and a lot of times I do that so people can see more of the colors of the art and kind of the difference between the highlights and the shadows but okay so let's begin let's have some fun we're gonna sketch it up real fast and then we are going to uh, paint it I'm going to do those half a circles and this one is coming outside obviously we're not gonna paint on the outside but we definitely want to make sure that our circles or half circles are spaced almost evenly so the center part is always this the little tiny one so I'm going to do quarter of a circle or half a circle you can push it a little bit more in and have it a half a circle and this is a quarter of a circle two facing each other and the rest will be kind of like like moons and I'm putting them pretty close and then the tip or this corner is going to be under and then coming out and the same thing I'm going to do on this side so I'm kind of going to space it out like this this is my center so those leaves are pretty much very tiny and they're pointing up and the next leaves I'm going to do kind of like circles but they're going to be overlapping so you see that area that's overlapping another overlapping circle and one more but oh that's a half a circles and one more that is a it's a quarter now from here that's going to help me to create my pointy pointy leaf now you guys do not push that hard on the paper because you're gonna want to erase most of it the next part will be I can start from here in between and I can place them almost in between and spread them out and again point point so do you see why we want to have the half circle there because it's going to help us create this point and this shape of the leaf much easier following the circle half a circle lifting up and lifting up and creating a little lift right here then the last leaves we're going to create right here and we can do that point and point i am going to create one more roll right in between but keep it almost the same height and that's it now I think I added way too many rolls of leaves so I might have to take this ones out and stretch this one a little bit on the outside but the idea was to make the leaf from a half a circle and then following that curve and lifting it in the center so you have that half circle help you to create the leaves so that's it I am going to open this part with the gum eraser I made it into a roll and I'll just roll over that so you can barely see now the lines from here I'm going to start first with the hard part and it's going to look very weird in the beginning and then it's going to be better so I'm using the paintbrush that came with the set with this one which is the Van Gogh and this was its number six round so this is what I'm going to use it has a pretty good 
point on the brush so that is the part that I would use the most on this painting. The first thing that I'm going to do is my shadowy shadowy part on the center, around the center leaves. And that is going to be a little bit of the ultramarine blue and the black and then I'm going to go in here and not adding water because I want more control over this, just for now. And kind of going around the center, the center leaves. So I'll just leave it just like that. It looks almost like a cat's eye and that's okay. The next part will be starting from the outside. I will be using water, clean water, and I'm gonna start with number one leaf and I'm gonna water down and I'll go all the way where the pencil mark is touching the other leaf all the way to almost to the pencil mark on the top but I'll leave a hair line of space so a hair line of space on that Now I'm going to use the two greens and the blue to create that leaf. And what I'm going to do first is take a little bit of the blue, so half, this is the only part that it's wet. I'm going to start right here where the shadow is and just gently push that color upwards from the edge. Wash my brush. Get the lighter green, start where my hairline of white separation with the pencil mark, take the darker green, and plant it somewhere, it really doesn't matter, the only thing that matters is shadow close to the other leaf, and this much lighter. And obviously the center is going to have a little bit of sunshine on it. So now I'm using clean brush to push the paint around and create a cloudy, cloudy look on the leaf. And turning it around to make it easy on myself. And making sure all my edges line away from the pencil mark and there's not straight but not ziggity zag so I'm gonna leave this I can add a little bit of yellow here it just seems like adding a yellow will be fun between the blue and the green there you go so that looks good I'll skip one and I'll go to the next one. And the reason why is I want to give this a chance to soak and dry a little bit before I go next to the neighbor. So the same thing, hairline between the edge on the tip of the leaf, and then I'm gonna wet the rest. Turning it the way it's more comfortable for my hand. Turning this around the whole time. And making sure I have this edge perfect. Tip of the leaf. And again, my color, I'm gonna mix a little bit green and blue. So it's a darker, darker green. And I'm gonna start again right here. like this green so I'm going to go back in here and change that. This is what we can do. If we see something we like better, why not change it right away. Right. So I like this greenish blue that got created. So now I'm going to go and we want to move kind of fast so you don't give the water a chance to get absorbed by the paper too much because you want those colors to play around together and create that cloudy look and creating that hairline almost 
between the top of your paper. Take a little bit of yellow and just mix it in with the green and the blue. So it becomes not yellow, it becomes greenish, much lighter. And we'll leave this alone. Okay, so moving. And if something like that happens, because I rubbed it with my hand, before it even dries, I'm going to make the paper wet. And then I'll use my napkin take it away so now we don't have that little um, smudge there for my hand okay same thing wet making that area wet all the way to the pencil mark and then hairline away from the pencil mark on the top just don't do kind of put the top maybe halfway down all around the leaf. The dry hairline. And now I'm going to get my blue, which is mixed with a little bit of green. It's a green blue. It's really, really cool. Wash my brush to get to the greens. Line away from the edge, barely, barely wide there. And now the darker, I'm gonna mix it right even on top of some of this. Wiping the brush, getting a little bit of the yellow, and just adding a tiny bit of yellow. So, this is the three leaves I'm going to go back to this one because now those two seem a little bit better. They're not soaking wet. And I'm going to water down all the way to the edge. All the way to the edge of that one. And two hairline around here. And then around the top hairline. So what we want to do is, I'll show you right here, is to leave a tiny hairline of space of white around the top of the leaf. So you're separating those two, and this will be the shadow that it's hidden, the leaf is hiding behind this one. So we have the shadow, then we have the highlight, and then the leaf begins. So this is what we're trying to create, so let's do that. So I'm going to move around and then around again, the hairline, and then I'm touching the pencil mark on the bottom part. I will add ultramarine, mixed a little bit with one of the greens, doesn't matter which one. As long as you keep one green to mix it, so you kind of keep almost the same color, but you don't have to. And I will do the same succulent in the different colors later on because I feel like that would be so cool if it's in pinkish or has the red on it. So I can't wait to do that and I'll share with you, but it will be absolutely the same. Same thing what we're doing here, except we're going to change the color. So wiping the brush from the color, didn't wash it because I'm still mixing greens and blues. Take a little bit of the yellow and now I'm going to just push it around and make sure it's smudged and also go around the lines where I want them to look a little bit more precise. Now, what's going on here is you see different blue than here. So, I'm gonna go back in. I'm gonna take the blue. And right away when I notice something that is a little bit different, maybe I'll go back and fix it. If 
I add fresh paint on an area where it's already dry, I'm gonna add a tiny bit of water on the inside and have that paint moved around. So now, there, this one is done and I'm gonna move to this side. You can make it much lighter leaves with more yellow or very, very light green or much darker or just change the color. You can make them purple instead of using the blue, you can use purple for that. It'd still be amazing. So I'm gonna do this one. And again, I'm going to get the paint almost to the pencil mark. So I'm leaving a hairline of white but on the part where it's touching the leaves on the other side, I'm going to add what you can mark to the pencil, so I'm not leaving a space. The only space on each leaf will be on the tip. Go around. And you can notice my water is not even clean anymore. It's a little bluish, greenish. That's okay because it's so faint, it will be okay. okay. Let's make it comfortable. So in the beginning, this looks like really interesting. Don't be afraid. We'll get there. And a little push even some of that inwards. Wash the brush, get my green, light green first. This is way too sharp, so I'm going to take clean, wet brush, not pretty brush, just wet, and just smudge the line of the grain that I just added. That's it. So I'm going to have to figure out what area is dry enough for me to work on. So those two are a little wet. This is dry, but it's bordering with that. So I'm going to go back to, to this side and start with this little guy. And again. I will touch the black area and then I'm going to go around, leave a hairline on the tip, leave a hairline on the tip and then go back down and fill in this with water. So that's the only thing we're doing. We're painting with water in the beginning and we're skipping around so we give chance to each of the areas soak in and dry slightly. I'm gonna take a little bit of blue ultramarine with some green. Green with the blue. And honestly, like I said, you can change the colors. As long as you have a shadow and a light color, you can do it any color you want. So this looks like a little bit too green, so I'm gonna go back and just add a little bit of the blue right right here. I'm going to go in, take a little bit of the green, light green, add it. You see how I'm going very close to the edge, getting the darker green and adding that in, getting a little bit of the yellow. Moving it around, it is 
Now a lot of times when I notice an area that it's a little bit too dark for my liking, I'll dry my brush and I'm going to go with a clean wet brush and I'm going to push down and I can roll and take away some of that paint. So now I'm creating a highlight and you can do the same thing on an area that's a little dry. Let's say I wanted to add a little bit of highlight right here. I'm going to wet this area and I can, this is a little bit drier than this, so I'm going to have to work it, work it, and rub it around. Then I'm going to push my brush and roll. And do you see how I created the highlight? Let's say I want it right here too, so I'm going to rub it. Get that aggravated a little bit then I'm gonna push and roll or you can use your uh, paper towel paper tissue to do the same thing and then since I have done those three and now I want to kind of create a very similar look on all of them I'm going to do that so I knew that we're gonna go a little bit over 30 minutes but that's okay and I'm gonna push and I'm gonna do the same thing to all of them. So when you're painting with watercolor, you can play around like that. You can add the color and then decide, oh, it's too much. If you have the right paper, your paper is probably more important than your paint. Um, because if you have the right paper, you are going to be able to do that. And let's say I took a little bit too much from here, I'm going to add water on this part. I'm gonna go back in and I'm going to add that color and just push it towards the wet areas of the leaf and just have them play around. And I still have control. So now we have this much bigger highlighted areas if we wanted that. We could have left it just like this and still be okay because that to me is beautiful too. So there is no wrong in painting. It's really playing around and experimenting. So I'm gonna take a little bit off just because I did all of them and leave it like that. Now since I played here, now I know that this is wet and I'm gonna be, I might be in trouble if I merge those two areas together. So I'm gonna have to try to stay away from that for sure. So my hairline might be a little bit bigger right with this little neighbor, but I don't have to worry so much with the one on top. So hairline and then almost disappearing when we're going down the leaf. Zero, zero separation on this part on the inside. Now I'm gonna take green and blue. And the same thing. Adding, now I'm gonna take a little bit black. The closer we get to the center, the leaves are a little bit more lifted, which means I will have a little more shadow. See how much darker this is? So I want to marry the picture. And if you have taken some of the classes, um, you know I say that, marrying the picture. So I'm gonna go around and add a little bit of that dark color. And, okay. There is a perfect line here. So I just want to gently smudge it, gently move it around so it's not so sharp because the way I want to do this is not to be super sharp. So I'm going to go back in here, just add a little water because I spent too much time talking. And I'm going to add blue, I mean blue, I'm going to add the light blue. And I'm going to make a little problem between those two areas so you can see how we can fix them. I'm going to create a little problem. And I'm going to just, I messed up. I created a little problem. As long as I have 
part of this white area, I will be okay. So I completely deleted this. Now what I need to do is wait for a little bit until this dries and add that blue outline on that leaf, the shadow, and push it towards this leaf. And then it's gonna give me a separation between this and this because those two are starting like to mix together and you cannot tell which one is where and that's okay. So even if that happens, you can fix it. The same thing is happening a little bit here. So I'm gonna go back to my black and I am going to emphasize a little bit on the area that it's disappearing. And then that is how I'm gonna keep them separate or give you the illusion of that. So I'm gonna take some of that black because I add it too soon. Or you can do like what we did with that. We can go back in here and with the tip of the brush, I can just take some of that paint away and wait until it dries and I can create that lighter outline. And even this, that it's less starchier white than the rest, it looks probably better. So on the end, if you want to go in and just slightly touch up areas that are already dry with almost invisible green, you're still going to be good. You're still going to be good. So I'm going to continue with those leaves and we're doing absolutely the same thing, touching that area right here but then leaving a hairline on the outside of the leaf. Filling in with water, so painting with water. Taking a little bit of the, now it's blue, green, and very little bit of black. So the black is almost like a bluish black. Adding that, taking the lighter color, adding it on the top. There is no water on that part. It's very easy for me to move it around and not to get in into the danger zone. Take a little yellow, which my yellow is not yellow anymore. And I just add that. I'm missing yellow on some of them, so I'm gonna go back in and touch. And this is what I do the whole time in the painting. I'm constantly comparing one leaf with another. If I add something that I like on a leaf, but I have not added that to the previous leaves, I'll go back in and I'll do it. And there is a little blue book, so I'm gonna go back in and dry it. Let me dry it with a brand new. That's it. So I'm gonna move this paint around. Perfect. So let's see what it's gonna take. So remember this little guy, how I got deleted the border. So I'm gonna emphasize. I'll just push the paint around. And if it's a little bit different blue, I'm gonna just go back and just give the rest of them a tiny little smudge of that blue. And again, pairing the picture together. And this is pretty much the easy part of our painting. So what we have to do for the center is, and I made them a little bit bigger from the, from the previous so you guys can see it, um, but you can always make those guys a little bit smaller. Now the thickness of the leaves, and I'll use my little eraser to create a leaf. <laughs> it's, those leaves are really, really thick. So if we're observing it this way, then we can see 
the face of the leaf, but if we move it this way, what we can see is this little edge and also these two edges. So we are seeing almost like a Y shape. If I turn it this way, it's like a Y shape. So that is what I'll be creating on those leaves, a Y shape or a smile. So I'm gonna start with a darker part and no watering that area. I want more control. Let's get the other green. So I use two greens to make this one. Even I can add a little bit of yellow. And like I said, my yellow is not all being yellow anymore. And I'll add the yellow. The next one, and I can do the same thing to all of them. I'm gonna do this on that side. I'm gonna do this one on this side. So this is part of the Y. You're going to see the Y. The hairline that it's going to be left is part of the leaf. So, do you see how this leaf it has the Y? If I turn it this way, and I'm trying not to dip the um, watercolor painting because it is wet and it's going to start breaking down. So I can do the same thing here. I have one color of greens on one side. Let's take a little bit of bluish green and do the inside too dark. So I want it to be a different um, darkness than the center. So I have to be lighter than that. Let's get that but darker than the outside. there is another leaf in the center and again I did well that looks like a T but it's okay as long as it's a T or a Y you're good so the inside of the leaf which is this part and the two lines and the one on the top let's take a little yellow That highlight, a line of a highlight, will give us the illusion of our plant sticking upward. So our leaves are not facing us that way, but they're facing us more this way. So you have kind of like a boat looking leaf. And now it's the playtime. So I'm going to see which of my leaves needs a little push and I'm gonna decide should I go with a lighter color or a darker color so let's say this one and I'm using I'm not joking but a hair or two on a tip of my brush this is what I'm gonna be using and I'm gonna position it in a way that I can control it I always plant a finger so if you're worried that you are going to touch your painting you're gonna ruin something you can use a brush or a pencil to lift lift it up from one side and rest your hand on it so it's not resting on your on your art. Um, I think I'm gonna plant a finger and then I'm going to use almost 90, 90 degrees upwards and I'm going to add tiny tiny bit of an outline and I'll bring it in close and it's almost invisible but it's there and the same thing on the areas where I feel like my leaf is not showing a lot and a lot of times that is right where the two leaves are meeting for the tip of the leaf
doing that. I'm giving them their shade back. start painting you feel like oh no this is not a perfect brush stroke just leave it alone move move on and then come back to it later and see how you feel about it now I'm probably going to be painting this flower quite a few times and every time I paint it will be a little bit different and every time I do it hopefully <laughs> I'll be better every time so don't just do something once do it a few times, change the color, because that's gonna change things in your mind, but the way it's painted should not be changed, or the way you're painting it should not be dramatically changed. So I'm gonna get a little bit of red, make it pinkish with my white. And now I am going to go around here the, leaving that hairline, which I'm getting right to the pencil mark. I will water and I'll do it in sections, so I'm not doing all at once. I'll water that, but I'm leaving that much heavier than the rest, and I am just going to push this around. The same thing. So I'm not watering my background going to the pencil mark and this is a dirty looking ink and that's okay and I'm not giving too much chance to that to go and dry and sit through the paper so real fast I'm gonna go back in with my brush and just smudge it and now it creates that perfect little glow around my element. That is a fun little technique to do. So I'm going to go around here, wash my brush, and push around and get that paint. And let's do this in a bigger area so you can actually see even better what I'm doing. So I'm making a lighter lighter pink and I'm gonna go right here corner go around and before it dries too much I'm gonna get water water clean brush and I'm gonna go in and activate that paint with water and make it go around so it creates a really nice edge you have a lot of control over your paint. And then I'm going to get more water and water the rest of the paper that's left because I have a lot of a lot of empty space here. And I'm going to take a little bit of pink, add it to the middle, and just need it more cloudy looking but I wanted to create this perfect glow in a way around. There's a tiny area missing here, so let's go back in. Just that wipe. And again, a hairline left. And if it's bigger than a hairline, I'll get my brush in. And I'll just, coming from outside, I'll just push it slightly, slightly in until it goes to almost to the area where the leaf is. So it's a hairline of white left there. So this is it. This is our little, little guy that we finish in what, 45 minutes? <laughs> 
All right, so I think we're good. We're going to um, finish this video and I'm gonna leave it right here. Um, now, this one is much lighter so you don't have to add as much colors to make it look amazing. And the center was much darker than the outside so I really like that effect more than what I did here. So that's something that I learned painting this a few times. So let's see here. So my center is slightly different than the outside. I like that better than keeping it almost the same. So that strength of color is almost the same throughout versus making it darker and lighter. So this was it. That was the only thing that I think that I'm going to have to try to remember to do or not do next time. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us thumbs up and don't forget to click that notification bell so you see all the videos that we post and we are here every Tuesday for you. And we'll see you soon. Stay healthy. Bye.